All right, folks, we're here with week three of the FPL recap. Uh, starting off immediately with Tante's OU game. Ooh, let me take a sip of my sweet tea. Right off the bat, we were thinking, I was thinking when I was watching this, man, Rillaboom looks pretty clean. If they can just get rid of the Ferrothorn and the Moltres. So I think that's going to be Tante's game plan going into this. They lead right off of the Barrascuta and we leave Magnezone. Get out of there and go into Mana Buzz. Um, they flip turn out and set up the rain. So already looking pretty good for King Crabs over there. Uh, we'll go Cartana on the U-turn. Back out in a bear scooter. Now here they get an intimidate off. Ooh, the close combat. Nice play. Okay. So what do they do now? In comes Mammo Swan, you turn to keep up momentum as always. Back into Kartana. Kartana puts in a lot of work too. Knock off what I'm assuming is gonna be okay, leftovers. I thought it might be Rocky Island, but leftovers make sense too, I guess. Go out in a mag zone on the Pelipper. And Ooh, the body press. Yo! That's a tech. They just Ooh. Switch right on the land. Oh man. I could never have been making these plays, man. I, I would I would just body press there again. But Tante's really getting the most of every turn going for Stealth Rocks. So with all that switching in and out, Stealth Rocks is gonna prove very useful. But they defog right away. As they're able to get Slow King in, and I'm assuming they're just gonna get off a of future sight here. In comes the Moltres Galar. Ooh, the Scald with the boost from the rain. Goes right for the agility. Goes for the sludge bomb. There's the berserk. Um, at this point, yeah, fire wrapped is a whole lot. But another sludge bomb is going to come so close. We don't get the poison, unfortunately. But Mandibuzz can easily eat this up. Um, so bar flinch. For, oh, there, there. The, I see the rain. Yeah, that's right. I remember thinking, oh, he's hurricane. But I mean. We can just go into Rillaboom and get rid of this thing with the Grassy Glide. Rillaboom is so powerful, I wonder if it's going to get suspected now that Cinderace and Magirna are gone. Anyways, we just go right for that glass and Grassy Glide again as they try to defog to get rid of the uh, terrain. I, would, I think I would have just hurricaned it though to get rid of it. Go for the body press on the Ferrothorn and that Ferrothorn is trapped now. They do get up rocks, but at this point rocks aren't doing a whole lot. Then again, it's not like the Ferrothorn can do much to this Magnezone anyways. Like literally, he's got Magnezone and like... Because now, look at this. Look at the position, like I said. The two things that were stopping Rillaboom from sweeping are gone. So, <laughs> I don't know if rocks are that necessary. Because you just get into a position, now you just go Rillaboom and everything is weakened. Pelipper is at 31, Zero Ore is at 57, it's GG's. Yeah, I lose to real, I think that's game. Bada bing, bada boom, my friends. This is crazy. Mamoswine comes in to attempt it. But I mean, we're faster, let me see. So 295, yeah, so we're, Rillaboom's faster than Mamoswine, so it can't even frickin' Ice Shard. And there's the forfeit. That is a very well played game. I, I need to learn from games like this. To improve my own games. Anyways, we're looking at the UU game now, and uh, we've got two Gal the Galarian Moltresses are coming in strong. So basically, just hyper hyper offense to the extreme here. Is you've got setup sweeper, setup sweeper, setup sweeper, and what could be a setup sweeper, and uh, stealth rocks and Aurora Veil, and then uh, light screens, stealth rocks, setup sweeper, setup sweeper, setup sweeper, setup sweeper. So very similar concepts here as we're going in. Lead right off with the Scizor. You can get a nice healthy U-turn out. So very good lead matchup for Seaburns. And uh, at this point, I forget what he did, did he? Okay, just go right for the Psychic, cool. As we, Volt Switch does a hundred million percent into the Nido Queen. Now, if I remember, yeah, <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking when I was watching this, alright, now you just switch out into like Scizor, right? And um, Nidoqueen died. But Nidoqueen wasn't really doing all. We've got all these setup sweepers. Who cares if we lost our one Nidoqueen? 
you know, that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Bullet punch to prevent the clangor of soul. And bada bing bada boom. Coma O is gone. Scizor is a threat and a half. In comes Ninetales on the Dragon Dance. Just a whole bunch of uh, setup sweepers. And the waterfall. Man, Ninetales is just eating it up. So, Veil is up. And what do they go into at this point? This thing, this thing is plus two. This thing is a threat. Go Moltres Galar, and I think we agility. Yeah, I was, I can't believe it didn't even. I mean, I guess. I mean, Glaring Moltres is bulk. Yeah, I keep forgetting. And with Aurora Veil, it's basically like it doesn't have any raises at all. And I was, I was like, dang. So it gets us into the Citrus Berry range, but it did not activate the Berserk, which I was really surprised by. At this point, though, we just go for Fire and Wrath, and we actually do get a flinch, which I was kind of surprised by. But, I mean, you saw, if they hadn't flinched, just we, if anything, they'd have just made us stronger. Would have gotten us down into that range. Uh, they can't even... Can't even Thunder Wave us, because of the way that Prankster works against Dark Types. And we are just flinching them into Oblivion. Get up a nasty plot. Ooh! Get us into Berserk range, please. Unfortunately, they did get a... Uh, a drop so we would have been 2.5 but instead we just reset to 2 with the berserk and we do actually miss so uh, that kind of sucks I guess we which you know we did get a flinch on the Gyarados but if anything the flinch on the Gyarados could have made I mean, it could have also made us just uh, lose to the Grimmsnarl flat out because they could have just spirit broken us there but we go Scizor they do get up the reflect as we U-turn on out and at this point, it's getting pretty close. They still have their uh, Galarian Zapdos. And here, we do miss a Focus Blast, unfortunately. So the not the Hax is kind of uh, leaning either way. So we do finally hit a Focus Blast. That's all we needed was to get the chip. We just needed the chip on the Crook. And there is the Aqua Jet, which does not kill. They go for the Taunt to stop us from uh, Melee Drumming, which is smart. And here, oof. This Galarian Moltres is in, and the Reflect is still up. We thankfully do not get flinched. That play rough damage is critical. They do get into Weakness Policy plus Berserk, so this thing is a threat. Um, but with Aqua Jet and the Reflect being gone, that is going to be ranged. So can you guys imagine if we missed that play rough? We would have lost the game immediately. But as you can see, very, very close game there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Maybe we should have saved Nino Queen, I don't know. But Seabrin's pulled it off, man. Just a whole bunch of hyper offensive set sweepers. Very fun game. In comes the Gen 5 game. Let's see what happens. I feel like this is a very similar team to what they brought last week. Um, the Acrobatics boosted by the Flying Gym does so much. In comes Gliscor. Uh, go Loom to get... Ooh, Toxic Poison? You're just helping me, my friend. Goes for the Facade. I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in Breloom. Not, I know it's not stab, but it's base 140 power. Like, come on. But I guess it's not Guts Boost, you know? I'm, I guess I'm trying to think like it's um, Obstacoon. But look at how much... Oh, that was a crit. That's right, I was going to say. But the Drain Punch, though, is doing a whole lot. Gyro Ball from Ferrothorn is not going to take out Breloom because Breloom is not particularly fast. That's only, what, 70 base speed or something? And with the Toxic Heal, or the Poison Heal, it'll bring us back up a little bit. So get a little bit more recovery, you know what I'm saying? Scout for what they go for. And a nice and powerful Drain Punch. Look at all that yummy HP. Good grief. That Scizor must have been running max HP or something. I don't know, because the amount that uh, healed, then again, maybe I'm wrong. In comes T-Tar, since they went for Icy Wind. Because um, that means they're Scarf, right? Yeah, they switch out. Do we get up rocks here, or... Yep. And at this point, um... Let me see. I mean, Alakazam kind of just goes in. Look at that. Once we get rid of the freaking uh, Keldeo. The Skull does a lot, but the Acrobatics should do a good chunk as well. So, did they just go back out in a T-Tar? Oh, they go Loom, of course. Just go for the Facade. Jeez, Politoed is eating it up. 
Breloom, you really disappoint me with this facade, man. I was expecting more, I can be honest. Go Lottie on the Parish. In comes Tentacruel. Can you just spam Psychic? Does it? I don't know. Lottie else doesn't normally run Psychic. Drop a Draco when we miss. You gotta be kidding me, bro. You gotta be kidding me. Um, but we just drop another one. And that's 90%. I mean, Tentacruel is a defensive monster. But that, that's the power of that base 140 Draco Meteor. Back whenever. Oh, jeez. All the protects. Latios, just drop a Draco already. Anyways, that's going to take him out with the toxic damage. But like I said, I mean, Alakazam kind of just sweeps. Um, they go Gliscor, but your HP is right. Yeah, we saw that last week, I'm pretty sure. So down goes Gliscor. Um, in comes Politoed, but I mean, I'm assuming you're Life Orb Magic Guard, right? I mean, jeez, Politoed. Is, what's the stat on this thing? Polito is just living every. I, I mean, I haven't used Polito in a while, so. I mean, who needs to whenever you get Pelipper? But it was the original Drizzle Pokemon. They tried to go for the double. Um, did they go for. Yeah, it was just one. Alright, in comes Keldeo. Bring in the T Tar on what I'm assuming is going to be the Skull. Oh, yeah, there's the Secret Sword on the T Tar. But of course, that's not. I mean, T Tar is not going to live a freaking Secret Sword from Keldeo. Especially since it does physical damage. But Loom is able to survive, and Facade, of course, is not going to kill because it didn't kill any of the previous times. But they've locked themselves. Wait, wait, they're not even Scarf. Oh, they were Specs the whole time. They were Specs the whole time. But that was really good of a of a NN1 to scout because you never know. All right, here we come to my game. All right, so right off the bat, what happens? Lead off Jirachi, Jirachi, Versace, Versace. And they lead off with Breloom, my worst enemy, the guy that's beaten me down these past two games. What do I do? I go right for the Psychic and knock it out immediately. Bada bing, bada boom, Breloom is no longer a threat. And I was kind of rejoicing there for a moment. We go into Caramel Latte, the sleep-talking Latios, and predict the Earth Power. I was like, well, it's a safe switch either way. Now here, I was like, all right, do I go into Metagross? as a double predicting the T-Tar. And I thought long and hard about it, and I was like, you know what, I just need to make the safest play in Surf, because I didn't know if they were Scar... I mean, of course they're going to be Scar feature. I should have thought about it, and just doubled right out into Metagross. I just stayed in Surf, though, unfortunately, and this is kind of... I mean, I know it's very early on, but the beginning of the end for me. And I thought... I was thinking they'd go for um, Pursuit, honestly, but they do just decide to go for the Crunch. Which of course is gonna knock me out. I'm like, dang. So I lose my Latios, which freaking sucks. And I, I really should have tried to um, predict since he was so low, but I just went straight for the Surf. And I should have predicted and went for Ice Beam. And then of course, I was like, oh, whatever, I'll just go for Ice Beam again. They bring back in Titar. And um, unfortunately, this is gonna be some key damage because they are actually in Custap range. And I didn't even think about Custat Barrier. So now they take out my freaking Starmie that, as you can see, would have put in work on the rest of their team. So that really sucks. So at this point, I'm just like, man. So I go for the hard Dragon Dance. But then they reveal Scizor. And I'm like, oh my goodness. you got It's all just going downhill for me. And I was like, man, if only I made that Metagross switch in initially, maybe I would have that Metagross double. Maybe I'd be somewhere. But you know, I can't be Monday morning quarterback. We bring in like a heat more. And this is what really uh, did it because think, if it if they hadn't have gotten a crit on the bullet punch, they would have been doing what, 34? And I would have been easily able to live another one. And um, could have overheated or bolt I could have bolt switched out, but it's in a heat tran and still been a, into a somewhat decent position. But they just immediately crit me, and so now my my uh, like a heat more is uh, critically damaged, so all I can do now is try to get up rocks to at least for the Heatran and stuff. I go for the Grass Knot to at least take out the T-Tar. You know, Grass Knot for Swampert lead. They bring in Heatran, and at this point, I do not have a lot for this thing. And they make the wise double. I I, I just was trying to sack off uh, my Rotom Heat, but really, what do I have for this thing? I'm, all I have is Metagross, really. 
And I should have tried to predict and go for the Meteor Mash, but I don't know why. At this point, I was kind of not really feeling myself, so I just went for the Earthquake. I should have thought about it more and gone for that. I knew it was a 50-50, and I did not win that 50-50. So I think I just go for the Psychic here to knock this thing out. Oh no, they go into Heatran, that's right. And at this point, Heatran just wins. Um, fairly certain. Yeah, because they go for the Earth Power. And I, I'm able to live the Earth Power, but I think, yeah, I was thinking the Earthquake was the safest play because Dragonite would die to Sand. In comes Scizor, though, which freaking sucks. I'm just, I just try to get some damage on this thing, and the Choice Band U turn is going to take me out. In comes Heatran, and it's a... I mean, I, 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 if you didn't know, I'm, I'm Scarf on this Metagross, so... I was thinking, man, maybe, I don't know, I could potentially bring it back, but they aren't Scarf Heatran after all, but of course they're Scarf. Oh, I think I knew because they outsped my Jirachi, I can't remember. But, um, yeah. So, I really need to learn to trust my instincts there, because they, they served me well. And this, I, I really should have made the double into Metagross and listened to my instincts, but, you know, it is what it is. And we keep moving on and learning. So, on to the Gen 3 game. Lead off with a nice, powerful Salamence against the Metagross. Double into or switch out in Gengar. I think we go for the HP. Yep, HP Grass, which barely misses out in the KO, but we do avoid them setting up the sub. But oof, the Salic Berry, the tech. We decrease their attack. Hyde, they are actually especially uh, offensive, as Hydro Pump is doing way too much. And not only that, we didn't, I was like, yo, they are in torrent range, they are doing so much. We do get very lucky and dodge the Hydro Pump, yo, because this freaking Swamper was pretty doing too, way too much. I, but I was thinking they were due for a Hydro Pump, I mean, that move is like 66% accuracy, you know. I feel like I miss one out of every three Hydro Pumps, if we're being honest. Anyways, they go out in a Magneton to trap us. You know, it makes sense. Go over the Thunderbolt, but... We do manage to live, and we set two layers of spikes. So Skarmory's, you know, doing what they need to do. Um, just trying to pee pee stall, you know, get rid of a couple. And bada bing, bada boom, there we go. All right, so there goes that fire blast to take out the Magneton. I was really surprised that kill, but then I remembered that Salamence has like base 110 special attack or something like that. Anyways. Are we gonna go for the Hydro here or the Draco Meteor? Here? No. Oh yeah, double out Mahara across the point. But the freaking Titar Dragon beats us. It's like, yo. But I think we are a Scar Heracross, right? Yep, just go for the Brick Break, safest play. But now they can just Dragon Dance up Gyarados. Just a bunch of Dragon Dance users. We are going to trace the Intimidate. And I didn't, I, why didn't this work? Somebody please in the comments tell, I, I couldn't find it out on my own, but I didn't really look into it that much. Uh, we were like, yo, why didn't Intimidate work on this freaking thing with Trace? Does, can Intimidate Pokemon not be Intimidated? Is that it? I don't know. I'm confused. Anyways, we go for the Double Edge. They go for the Double Edge. And bring back in the T-Tar. We are going to live because we're a T-Tar, of course. Oh, missed the Rock Slide. Uh, well, I, you know, it's it's Justice, you know. They, they did miss the uh, Hydro Pump. Anyways, bring in the Salamence to get the Intimidate off. Now the Intimidate wants to work. That's cool. Um, get some Leftovers Recovery. Bring back in the T-Tar on the Double Edge to make it take some more ship. You know. And then what happens? Another Dragon. Yo, that, that was a brazy play, bro. That was a brazy play. Because Rock Slide just takes them out. Anyways, in comes Celebi, who goes for the sub. Subasa really wants to set up and win. They really want to set up. They're going for the hard reads. Go for the Giga Drain to take out Titar. In comes Salamence, throw off another Fire Blast, you know what I'm saying? Titar is still pretty. Has a lot of. Yeah, in comes Titar on the Fire Blast, I'm assuming. Yep. Now, do you have high? I'm sure Salamence gets Hydro Pump, right? Oh, yeah, Brick Break, of course. Take that thing out. In comes Metagross. He just hit this thing with a Fire Blast. Now, does this, this thing Aka Berry? Nope. I'm just thinking of another battle. 
All right, and down goes Salamence. In comes Gengar, who should be able to just sweep at this point. Oh, another Salak Berry. Bro, this is crazy, but Gengar lives. And he's going to die to sand. Yo, this I forgot how close this battle was. That's right. Oh, my goodness. And then Heracross comes in. He lives the... Bro, how are you going to live the Psychic? This is crazy. From a freaking Celebi. And Megahorn to take it out. Oh my goodness, what an amazing, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it at the time. 85% chance to win, that's right. Oof, and now we come to the VGC matches. I'm pretty sure this is game one, right? Um, let's see what happens. This is game one, right? Yep, okay. So, lead a bomb of snow and Porygon 2 versus me. Yo, this Porygon 2 was put in freaking work against us. Would have much rather prefer the special attack download, but you get what you can get. In comes, ooh, switching to Heatran, dang. All right, but now what are you gonna do though? Because you're going up against the, ooh, the Dynamax. Oh my goodness, I feel like, oh, that's really smart. The balloon, take out the balloon and the Max Quake. Yeah, because in Trick Room, Porygon's gonna be fast. That was incredibly smart. Alright, Dynamax the Gastrodon. Yo, th this is why I can't play VGC. I, I can't even understand what's going on. Go for another Max Quake to increase the Spadef. I mean, there's not much else you can do to this Gastrodon. Ooh, the Eerie Impulse to decrease the Spadef. That did not matter all though, because we have decreased Special Defense. In comes a bomb of snow who can literally just obliterate this thing. The recover. Uh, yo, the freaking plus two special defenses coming through, plus the fact that they're dynamaxed. Now it's 2.5. But even then, I mean, you're, you're gonna be able to whittle this thing down eventually. The protect, of course. Yo, this Groudon is really scary. Fire Punch, but we have the Sash, yo. Ooh, and we take out the Groudon. You'll love to see it. Try attack on the... This Porygon is literally putting in so much work. Now that your defenses are reset. Ooh, the Protect. They're all going for the Obama Snow. Eerie Impulse. Yo, Eerie Impulse is so good. Fake, everything is just faked here, Eerie Living on 1% into Giga Drain? Oh my goodness. Oh, there went my alarm. Try attack, we get the burn. Oh my goodness, the forfeit. All right, game two, what happens? Lead Lando and Eternatus. That's what, I think that's it, right? Eternatus, I think that's what it is. Not er Eternatus, no, Eternatus. Uh, go into a bomb of snow for that Gastrodon. The Dynamax Cannon does so much. Eat up the Ice Beam. And I, I can't even keep up. Yo, you, you gotta think. Shout out to Hope, man. She's having to think in like 11 dimensions. I can't even keep up with all this stuff. Eerie Impulse plus Trick Room and Fake Tears and all this. this and knowing which one to go. I, I could not play VGC. Nope. That's not for me. Into the Heatran. Are you, I'm assuming you're gonna. Oh, go Lando. Are you gonna break the balloon? Another fake tears. Yes, we do. Break that balloon. The freeze, too. Dang. Hey, y'all remember we got frozen last week, so I don't even wanna hear it. Um, they're gonna die to hell. In a sec. Dynamax the Lando. Max Quake. Give me some Spadef boost. Yes, sir. In comes the Heatran, who no longer has their balloon. Um, they went for the Max Quake. I'm confused. Oh, maybe it was because we switched out. Go ahead, Ternatus. I don't know. Anyways, Max Airstream to get the speed boost. Dynamax Cannon takes that out. Dynamax Cannon is so good, considering it can basically bypass Dynamax. Like just go and bypass this Dynamax real quick. Bada bing, bada boom, you're gone. Into Max Quake. The crit! 
Tech Hill through the Protect. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. In comes the Meowstic on 1 HP, it's frozen. Ah, nice job, Hope. I gotta clap for that. I, I could not think in all those dimensions, that was crazy. So, yeah, uh, everybody <laughs> got a win, except for your boy. But uh, I think with my team, I could have won. I just needed to, uh, really, I played myself. Um, nah, Bernie out, definitely outplayed me. Yeah, we're gonna try to do our best in this next week. I've already got a team in mind. And, uh, yep, let's hope we can keep moving up in the rankings in week four. So be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Join my Discord for some Wi-Fi battles if you're interested. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.